Edge at 11 starts now. Tonight on The Edge, one of the most notable names in Detroit journalism finds himself behind bars. Charlie LaDuff was arrested at his home for domestic abuse. Fox 2's Dave Spencer has more on what we learned about his arrest. This is case number 2300075PR. This is the People versus Charles LaDuff. A familiar face to longtime viewers of Fox 2 News. Charlie LaDuff was known for his unique storytelling ability, widely considered an advocate for Detroiters. Now, however, accused of a serious crime. I asked the court to uh, allow him to stand mute and asked the court to enter not guilty plea at this time. All right, I'll enter a plea of not guilty on behalf of your client. During his arraignment, Ladoff, seen in clothes he was wearing at the time of his arrest, didn't say a word. He is, um, you know, I, I believe a fixture in the community. He's not a flight risk, but, you know, this doesn't make it any less serious. Leaving his attorney to deliver his message on his behalf. The most important thing to, that Charlie wants people to know is that he loves his family, um, you know, his, his wife, his kid. Um, he loves them and, and really wants to keep this as private as possible. Details of the alleged crime will likely come during the next court appearance. The complainant in this matter is his wife of 31 years, um, and I don't know what she has indicated. At his arraignment, his attorney argued for his release from jail. And I understand this is an incident that allegedly occurred in his home, and I, I think that's the real issue of what the court wants to do. Um, I would ask for a, a, a recognizance bond. The judge gave Ladoff a bond on the condition that he doesn't contact his wife, go to his house, or use drugs or alcohol. I know that he has no prior history of failure to appear for any court appearances. Uh, he has one prior from 2007 that was uh, alcohol related. Uh, at this time, I'm going to give him a 5,000 personal bond. Ladoff was recently let go from his job as a columnist for the Detroit News, but still maintains a media presence hosting a weekly Detroit based podcast. He's expected back in the courtroom on February 13th for a preliminary hearing. Ladoff is now out of jail, but not allowed to go back home. In fact, his attorney asked if he would be allowed with a police escort to go back to his house to at least gather some belongings. The judge said in cases of domestic violence, she simply doesn't allow it. In Pleasant Ridge, Dave Spencer on the edge. Well, a Detroit police officer facing charges of manslaughter for a deadly assault while in uniform. The victim was a 71-year-old man. We're told police were called to a bowling alley on Woodward back in September for reports of a disorderly man. Things turned physical when police arrived. Prosecutors say 29-year-old officer Jawan Brown punched Daryl Vance in the face. He fell to the ground, hit his head, and later died from his injuries. Investigators found the officer's actions went criminally beyond what was necessary. Brown is due in court tomorrow. Stay with Fox 2 for updates. Take out to Frazier tonight. A police officer there jumping into action when he sees a vehicle engulfed in flames. Officer Cameron Reaper risked his own life to save the elderly woman whose car was stuck in a ditch. I arrived on scene. I was the first officer. Um, I observed that the vehicle was on fire. There was uh, flames in like the bed area of the truck, and then the engine compartment was just starting to catch on fire. She appeared confused, wasn't really answering any questions. Um, she was still inside the vehicle, so I opened the door, took her safety belt off, and tried to get her out of the car. She was an old elderly female. Um, it's really unknown if she had a medical issue or if that um, what exactly happened for the original crash. Prior to his time at Fraser PD, Officer Reaper was actually a firefighter and used those skills to rescue the woman. We're told the victim is in the hospital, but her injuries are non-life-threatening. Also tonight, a U.S. postal worker goes out of her way to deliver comfort to a resident on her mail route. Yeah, following the loss of his father, the delivery of his cremains, I should say, was held up in transit. Fox 2's Dave Kinchin joins us live with more on how he received the ashes in a very special delivery. Dave? Yeah, very special, very personal, and so emotional for this son, remembering his father, who he lost a very short time ago, and really his whole family feeling a little bit better tonight. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the closure and let loose like I really, really felt I needed to until I had him here with us. This year, the holidays are heavy for Mike Pigeon of Belleville, who just lost his father of the same name right after what turned out to be their last Thanksgiving together. He died in Florida November 30th. 
in order to find my closure, we didn't have any kind of um, ceremony or funeral or anything for him. We were just waiting on the cremains and everybody was going to do a celebration of life, you know, this summer, right around his birthday. But the wait for his father's remains to return home was simply agonizing. On Saturday, the tracking information said he was in Dexter, Michigan, about 1134. Um, waited patiently all Saturday evening. Um, my normal post lady was driving down delivering um, what looked like uh, small packages into the mailbox. So I ran outside real quick and inquired with her if she could have, if she happened to have any details or maybe a time frame that he may deliver. And she let me know that they were doing strictly Amazon deliveries on Sunday, which was understood. A few hours later, another delivery person came by as captured by their ring doorbell camera. So as soon as I turned the corner over here, she was standing over there and just with the look of joy on her face and the first, I didn't even ask her for the cremains, I just asked her for a hug because that moment was so special. She then um, proceeded to tell me that the lady went back to her post, escalated the issue to her postmaster who then had to make another phone call and that's why she was here. She got the phone call and the okay to come bring me those cremains. Mm -hmm. um, neither one of those had to do that. It was a strictly Amazon kind of day and understood I'm in the logistics business. I know, you know, how that goes. So her and I had a moment and these ladies just went absolutely above and beyond. Mike says he was so caught up in the moment, he did not get the name of the person who delivered the remains, so he hopes she's watching so he can say this. You ladies, um, thank you so much, so much. It meant the world to me, um, my father's home, and you know, I could have waited the other 24 hours until he, he, he arrived. But um, that moment was so special to me, and right around Christmas time, I just feel you ladies deserve the recognition um, publicly and from myself and my family as well. And he says that he's hoping to have a sort of reunion with both of those uh, mail carriers and thank them in person and also give them some thank you cards as well. So if you're watching, certainly you gained yet another fan. Reporting live, Dave Kinchin on the edge. You know, oftentimes during this time of the year, we just think about gifts coming to the door, whether it be Amazon or the USPS. The things that these folks do each and every day, they're delivering the most important pieces of our life. This is something important. We hope that the people who did this are watching and they can step up so they can be recognized. Yeah, no doubt about it. And Mike said that that Thanksgiving was so special that his dad actually came up from Florida. They wanted to watch the Lions game together. So certainly very tragic, that being their last holiday together. But now, in a way, uh, that's no longer the case because uh, so hopefully some sense of peace and closure can come to Mike and his family, for sure. And some gratitude with those uh, wonderful ladies stepping forward. We hope they do. Dave Kinchin for us live tonight. Thank you. Turning now to weather, a mild December continues. Yeah, it's pretty nice. No mm -hmm. one's complaining about this. More temperatures in the 40s this week. But you know what? Maybe the only time someone's going to complain about not having snow is during Christmas. Mm -hmm. So we go to Derek Kever, who, by the way, predicted about a week and a half ago that we would not likely have a white Christmas. I don't think we're going to see it. It is funny. You're, you're totally right, because every other day of the year we talk about snow and people are like, oh, no. But on Christmas, everybody wants it. Here's an interesting stat about this December. We have had five days with snowflakes. Four of those days, trace amounts of snow. That's like barely anything, just a, a light coating. Yesterday's snow was 0.1 inches. Now, usually in the month of December, we get about nine inches of snow. We have had 0.1 inches so far. So it has been a mild and also a snowless December. But instead of the snow, what we have seen is rain. And we're going to talk about some rain numbers in just a second. And we're going to get more of this rain as we move through. Really not the Fox Futurecast time zone here, which is the next 72 hours. But later Friday into early Saturday, and then probably again on Christmas, we're going to see a couple of showers. But the clouds are going to come back. You see there, there you go. There's a little bit of a activity that's just starting to spark up. I think this is a better opportunity for us to see some of that rain. That's going to happen late on Friday. You're looking right there at 8.30 p.m. So Friday late leading into Saturday, we could see more of that. So let's talk about that rain real quick. As far as how much we had in the last 24 hours, we had 0 0.07 inches for the month so far. We're right on track with where we're quote unquote supposed to be. For the year, we are above. We are in excess. 
about two and a half inches more rain than we typically see. It was a very wet summer. It was a uh, wet spring. All of this adds together. So the next two weeks as we wrap up the month of December and this water year, no doubt it is going to be an above average water year. And we probably still have a couple more days of rain mixed in there. Friday night is one of them. And then maybe Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, we could see a little bit of rain. Thankfully, the winds have dropped down. Boy, was it windy yesterday. We saw those gusts up to 35, 40 miles an hour. Today, they've been very normal at around 10 to 15. Temperatures tonight will drop down to 28 degrees. We are still going to be below freezing, which means if we have any water still left on the roads or the sidewalks, it has the potential to freeze. Now, heading into tomorrow, we get above freezing by 10 a.m. We will then stay above freezing through the afternoon with an official high of about 42 degrees. Partly cloudy skies, and we keep this mild weather around all the way into Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. 48 degrees Christmas Eve, and I think we hit 50 as we see Christmas. Guys, back over to you. All right, Derek, thank you. Well, some pretty big changes will be coming in the new year for parking enforcement in the city of Detroit. That includes some things that have never happened before. Citywide parking safety violations will now be enforced on Sundays. Violations include blocking fire hydrants, alleys, or driveways, but meter parking will still be free on Sundays. And starting January 2nd, enforcement begins for new residential parking zones. Residents will need a permit to park seven days a week now. Enforcement in those zones start one at a time on January 2nd right into February. That applies to Cass Park and Selden, Southern Brush Park and Central Brush Park. Residents are being urged to get those permits online now. And here's the address, parkdetroit.us.